Guys, Nahida is about to have a rerun, so here is a video on how you should build her for every team she can fit in, and I'll also address how crucial she is for each of her teams later in the video with a tier list. So, builds wise, Nahida is a quite varied character because she has a lot of different uses for a lot of different teams, and for each of these uses, she has a lot of different options. As a support, she can be played as an off field sub DPS for Quicken and Quick Bloom teams, on field or off field enabler for all kinds of Bloom teams, and off field enabler for Burning teams. Her most popular role is probably that of an off-fielder sub-DPS on teams where Quicken is in the picture. On these teams, she's typically dealing some nice damage in AoE through her elemental skill and also setting up her teammates through her burst elemental mastery buffs and elemental application as a whole. However, since on these teams she's typically paired with either a strong carry or a combination of units that can dish out a lot of damage, her own damage becomes a bit secondary here. Artifacts-wise, it depends on the team. In this scenario, Quick Bloom is the most typical team archetype, so teams are used either an Electro or Dendro carry, but also a Hydro sub DPS to generate Bloom cores. In this case, you strictly want Nahida to use the Deep Food set, because its resistance reduction effects will also be reducing the opponent's resistance to all kinds of Bloom damage. Secondarily, if you're talking about a case without Blooms but just Quicken, there are two main scenarios. If she's being used with a Dendro carry like a High Time and Tignary, then her using the Deep Food set becomes a no-brainer. Not only it massively increases their output, but it's also really good for Nahida's damage itself, as it contends with very strong alternatives like Gilded Dreams and Golden Troop in terms of maximizing her elemental skill ceiling. There is an exception to this rule, however, and that's if somebody else is already using the Deep Food set on the team, of course. On the flip side, if you're using Nahida on Quicken teams that don't involve major Dendro damage dealers, then things change a bit because Deep Food won't be as useful. So, cases like Sino, Yae, or Cloran Quicken, teams with plenty of Electro damage dealers in general. In these cases, you can either just give her Deep Food anyway, Gilded or Golden Troop just to increase her output, or you can give her Tenacity of the Middle Eight so she can continuously provide attack buffs for her team through elemental skill heads. Most electro carries benefit nicely from attack even on quicken teams, so it's a pretty nice choice which can become the clear best one if your investment on them is high. Alternatively, you can use Instructor on her, or even the Nathan Scroll set, which can compete with or even beat Tenacity depending on the situation. Stats-wise, in most cases you want to prioritize Nahida having enough energy recharge to use her elemental burst, and this can vary depending on the team. It's typically pretty low on double or triple dendro teams, obviously, and even on the double electro teams, it can be lowish since these are teams with rather long rotations. The one exception would be Cloran Quicken, since Cloran's low field time as a carry can make rotations pretty short, and in these cases, Nahida's energy requirements can shoot up pretty highly to the point where bursting every rotation can be debatable. Besides that, just focus on elemental mastery to maximize the amount of buffs she will be providing. This is because an elemental burst gives the active character elemental mastery bonuses based on how much Nahida has herself, and this caps out when she reaches 1000 elemental mastery. Reaching this threshold can be easy depending on which weapon you use, but it typically requires a lot of focus on elemental mastery through artifacts. Elemental Mastery will also be increasing her elemental skill crit rate and damage bonus, on top of increasing her quicken damage, so it's also pretty good to make her a great sub DPS. In that sense, a Dendro Damage Bonus Goblet and a Crit Circlet are competitive with their Elemental Mastery counterparts, but considering the supportive benefits Nahida gets from building Elemental Mastery, the latter takes priority here. Now, weapons-wise, she has quite a few options. Mainly a signature weapon, which plays to her strengths perfectly, because it provides her with a lot of elemental mastery and damage bonus, while also giving an elemental mastery buff to the rest of the team, which, while small, is nice to have on quicken teams. Besides this obvious choice, you can go a couple different routes. For example, you can give her other 5-star options like Kagura's Verity to increase her own damage output. Her 4-star options are also pretty good, mainly because a lot of catalysts buff elemental mastery by a lot. The best one will be the Wandering Even Star, since its passive also gives attack bonuses for the rest of the team. This effect strength varies depending on who she's paired with, but since it's extra support for free, it's always nice, and it even makes the weapon competitive with her signature on some teams. Alternatively, Sacrificial Fragments to maximize their Elemental Mastery, or even Magic Guide and Map Amair. I usually prefer Sacrificial here, because out of any 4-star option it gives the most Elemental Mastery, but you can typically pick any and it will be fine. Note that Map Amair's effect says that it gives damage bonuses when the holder triggers an Elemental Reaction, but what it doesn't say is that it can only proc while he's on field. Then, in some extreme cases, she can even use Favonius. This weapon is not good for her support or damage output, but it can be a viable option if her energy requirements are particularly high or if teammates need extra energy. Then, Hakushin Ring, which can be 
good than Electro Focus Team, since two quick and procs, Nahida can buff their Electro Damage bonus, and it also provides enough energy recharge to take care of her requirements. However, the uptime of this weapon is rather low, and just like Mapamare, the holder needs to be on field to activate it. Luckily, Nahida can swap in pretty frequently on the quick swap teams with Keqing or Yae, so in those cases it's pretty great. Then she can also use something like Trilling Tails to buff a specific teammate's attack on the team. However, this is typically not great, because Nahida is either used on teams with dual scaling carries such as Alhaitam, so characters that partially benefit from attack and partially from elemental mastery, or on teams that feature multiple strong damage dealers, which happens mostly on Electro Quicken teams where Fischl is there. Lastly, I want to point out that on some Quick Bloom teams, where the Quicken uptime gets disrupted by the Bloom triggers and as such is not very consistent, Nahida's damage is not the highest. In this situation, supportive options definitely take priority priority over straight damage ones like Kagura. And this, as a whole, closes the section on when she's used as an off-field sub-DPS for Quicken or Quick Bloom teams, so now let's talk when she's used as an enabler for Bloom teams in general. On these compositions, she's typically backed by a multitude of Hydro sub-DPS, and depending on the type of Bloom team you're playing, the last slot can either be a Dendro, Pyro or Electro character. Nahida's role here is to continuously attack either on field or off field to generate as much dendro application as possible, which will then translate to bloom damage. I'll be very clear, on these teams her own damage is not important, because the quicken uptime will be basically non-existent. Nahida's skill really relies on quicken to deal significant damage because it has no internal cooldown and so it can trigger spread on every proc, and as a result, when it's not in the picture, Nahida's damage tanks significantly. Additionally, her burst can also be situationally relevant because it only buffs the active character, which on many of these teams is Nahida herself, so she won't actually be supporting the main source of the team damage. In cases like Nilu Bloom, since it's a team that swaps character around a lot, it can vary, but generally speaking, Nahida's burst is not extremely relevant here. Still, you want to build Nahida with elemental mastery on Nilu teams regardless, because she'll be the dendro trigger of some of the bloom damage of the team, which will scale off from elemental mastery. This is different from Hyper Bloom or Burgeon teams, where the Electro or Pyro characters will be the final triggers of the reactions, so Nahida's elemental mastery doesn't matter there. As a result, there is no real requirement for Nahida's stats in these two teams. Artifacts-wise, you want her to hold the Deep Wood set here. As I mentioned before, these set's resistance reduction effects also affect the damage opponents take from Bloom, so it's a no-brainer on Nahida here. I would say that Nahida is one of the best holders of this set in the whole game, if not the best, because her elemental skill always targets every opponent marked, so it's very consistent in AoE scenarios, which is crucial on AoE teams like Nilo Bloom. Weapons-wise, anything works really. Uh, Favonius is pretty good here, because uh, with Nahida being an on-fielder potentially, she can trigger the passive effects a lot of times and generate a lot of particles for the team, and this is nice for uh, energy-starved characters like uh, Sinjo, Yelan, Tom especially, so uh, Nahida helps here. And this is pretty much it for Bloom scenarios. Then come the burning scenarios, so situations where Nahida is used to fuel the burning uptime on opponents through her off-field dendro application. This concept is usually adopted on Vaporides or Melt teams, since burning makes the Pyro aura more consistent on an AoE skill, and as a result can help characters like Newlet or Rizli out. Additionally, in these situations, Nahida's elemental burst is really meaningful, since its elemental mastery base buffs can increase Melt and Vaporides damage a lot. On the contrary, just like on Bloom teams, Nahida's own damage output is not relevant here, as there is no quicken uptime. Your stat priorities should just be energy recharge and elemental mastery, so you can make your burst consistent and good supportive effects wise. Artifact sets wise, no real use for the deep food set here, because it buffs neither the burning damage, as it counts as pyro damage, nor obviously the vaporites or melt damage. So you can give Nahida some really side options, like tenacity of the millilit if other characters on the team benefit from attack, instructor to provide team wide elemental mastery buffs and increase reaction damage even more, or the Nathan scroll set for damage bonuses. Weapons wise, uh, no big deal, either use a high energy recharge option like Favonius, a high elemental mastery option like Sacrificial or Signature, or specific supportive options like Trilling Tails. And this concludes the builds guide part of this video. Now, I want to talk a bit about how essential I think Nahida is on each of her dendro teams, but first let me remind you that if you enjoy my content and my theory crafting but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really makes me notice your support. So I'm doing this because there is a lot of talk about how essential Nahida is for each of her dendro teams, and I want to give a clear idea on a team-wide scale here regarding what I think. I would say Nahida is definitely essential still for all of the quicken 
teams with Dendro carries like Alhaitam, Tignari, because there uh, she is a very good battery, her elemental mastery buffs are very strong because Alhaitam skills a lot from elemental mastery, and so does Tignari, and in general she's just a very essential pick and the best in slot always. Quick Bloom is also the case, uh, either with an Electro carry or a Dendro carry, Dendro carry the same argument as before because uh, if Alhaitam is being the on-field DPS there, he's getting buffed a lot. Electro carry is still pretty good, for example Sino gets buffed a lot by her and uh, her application is uh, very useful for the bloom triggers. Needle bloom teams is also a place where Nahida is essential to me because her AoE application is just too good here because uh, the team is AoE based and their elemental skill is just irreplicable in how it can apply dendro on an AoE scale. Then uh, quicken electro carry so when you use a Yae official or a Chloran official or sign official uh, Nahida is replaceable here because her buffs are not as valuable as they are when uh, you're playing a dendro carry she's not being a great battery either and uh, so i think she's replaceable by characters like baiju kirara uh, yayo even hyperbloom and burgeon both great but replaceable i'm mostly referring to the on-field nahida roles where she's being she's being used as an on-field enabler and she's replaceable by baiju specifically here because he pretty much does the same thing in applying dendro through normal attacks elemental skill elemental burst but he also heals on top of that so he can sort of replace nahida in this role and do well as well. Burning, I would say, side alternative, uh, mostly because burning as a whole is a side alternative used to the vaporites and melt teams I talked about before. Uh, because uh, in those teams, you can just use Shen Ling, and by yourself, she would she would be applying enough pyro for Nubulet to vape or Brizzly to melt. And so adding burning on top of that is just an extra that isn't necessarily required. So I would say that as a whole, Nahida definitely has a very strong meta spot still, but she's not this irreplaceable dendro character some people think she is. And with this, I'm done for today. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and also go check the top 5 5-star video I made a week ago. Bye bye.